Theodore Roosevelt came here to kill a buffalo, but he fell in love with the country. And he won the grudging respect of his neighbors, but eventually they came to like this guy and be rather attached to this strange character from the East. Roosevelt would have been, would have been dead like that in a duel. He loved the outdoors, he loved the environment, he loved hunting. All these things were available for him here. When you do a biography of Roosevelt, his Badlands chapters, I think it's the, it's the coming of age one, it's the turning of a, of a page. Theodore Roosevelt came to the Dakota Territories and he pushed himself and he hardened himself physically and emotionally and he relied on that for the rest of his life. This program was made possible by grants from the North Dakota Humanities Council, the Southwest Rural Economic Partnership, the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame, and was produced in cooperation with Prairie Public Broadcasting. The Badlands of North Dakota. Rugged buttes, canyons, grass plateaus, a river called the Little Missouri that meanders slowly north towards the Big Missouri. Sunlight dances off the buttes like a ballet, and winds blow gently through the grass, across the plateaus, and through the ravines. 65 million years ago, the Badlands was home to the dinosaur. Herds of Triceratops and the mighty T-Rex roamed what was then a swamp-like land. 35 million years ago, Mesohippus, the three-toed, three-foot-high ancestor of today's horse, called this land home. Then a thousand years ago, Buffalo and the American Indian claimed the Badlands. In the 1870s, trail drivers pushed their herds north from Texas to graze the rich grasses of this little Missouri Valley. This quickly became cowboy country, a place for men with big hats, shafts, guns, and whose heads danced with big dreams as they explored the open range. This is a place of rugged beauty in the spring and summer, but treacherous in the winter when blowing snow and bitter winds make it dangerous for the people and animals who live here. Coyotes howl into the north winter wind and life slows on the frozen landscape. The winds eventually calm, days become longer, Alberta clippers stay in Canada. The snow melts and the waters run into the little Missouri. The prairie flowers push through the gumbo and the grass again turns green. And when spring returns to the Badlands, hope is eternal. The newborn buffalo, deer, elk, calves, and colts take their first shaky steps. It was into this land in the fall of 1883 that a young whirlwind by the name of Theodore Roosevelt stepped off the train at the town that was then called Little Missouri. The 25-year-old Roosevelt loved guns and the outdoors. He considered himself a naturalist and had come to Dakota Territory to hunt and study wildlife. Where there were once millions of buffalo, now there were few. And when the dandy from New York jumped off that train, he was determined to shoot one of the few remaining shaggy giants. One of the great misnomers that people have is somehow hunting is not synonymous with conservation. Most of your first-rate hunters are conservationists. They're the first people to really care about species survival, ecosystems staying intact. Theodore Roosevelt was born a New York blue blood 
in a Victorian era. He was frail, sickly, and advised not to plan on living a full or active life. But Roosevelt saw himself as a Renaissance man. He loved and lived life with gusto. He was captivated by nature, but was also scholarly. He had attended Harvard, where by sheer force of will, he overcame life-threatening asthma. He was also a man of contradictions, a serious author, a prude when it came to personal matters, but a man who loved guns and blood sports. And despite personal wealth, he was a political reformer. Born on the cusp of the Civil War in 1858, Theodore Roosevelt would live to be 60 and the most vigorous and forceful man ever to occupy the White House. He was a trust buster, a conservationist, a flag waver who celebrated the 4th of July every day. His motto, speak softly, but carry a big stick. Theodore Roosevelt began his climb to greatness in 1880. He graduated from Harvard, married, and within a year was elected to the New York legislature. He also wrote an acclaimed account of the Naval War of 1812 that is still considered a tour de force. T.R. got interested in politics, I think, partially because he felt a responsibility. He saw that politics in New York in the early, in the 1800s, late 1800s, was being run by a, a different type of person. These were the immigrant machine kind of politicians. And he heard a lot of people complaining, as they do today, about politics. His view is you can't complain about it unless you get involved in it. Roosevelt's trip west to the Badlands to shoot his buffalo would change his life forever. For here, he would rub elbows with the people of the West, the cowboys, the homesteaders. It is here he would develop and refine his thoughts about creating a democratic society that was fair to all. When he stepped off the train in the Badlands, he was considered snobbish, a dilettante, a man who expected the finer things in life. But reality was waiting. The only sleeping quarters were at a building called the Pyramid Park Hotel. Theodore Roosevelt spent the night of September the 7th, 1883, in a large room filled with bunks, bed bugs, and a dozen other snoring, likely liquored up, gun packing cowboys. The most popular place in Little Missouri was the saloon called Big Mouth Bob's Bug Juice Dispensary. The clientele, dubious. The whiskey, bad. The house special was called 40 Mile Red Eye, 